hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. I hope you had a beautiful weekend. Today I want to talk about another topic that's close to my heart. Ever since we heard that thyroid conditions couldn't be reversed or that Hashimoto's, oh, it's the same medication required as a normal thyroid. You know, why aren't you, why do you need to get your TPO test done? Why do you need to get your anti-ATG test done? These are useless tests. If you have a thyroid problem, you've got to take a thyroid medication for the rest of your life. And I refuse to believe that because in my career over eight years, there have been people who reversed their thyroid and their own and their Hashimoto's thyroid. And I wanted to study the lives of these people to see what they did differently. Because when you, want, when you have one community of medicine, and it's not their fault, it's what they learn, telling you that you need to be on a medication for a lifetime, but you have a whole load of other people who have gotten off their medication by their own doctors putting them off medication because their thyroid gland no longer had a problem, it shows us possibility. Now the world today is trained for instant gratification. We don't wanna put in effort. We don't wanna do the work required. We want anything that can solve our problem with the least effort and in the quickest way. And because of that, the, human, the, the world is suffering right now, okay? We have instant pills, but we have more sickness. We have drugs can, that can suppress your symptom and give you immediate relief, but we have more sickness. We have more suffering, we have more death, we have all of these problems because instant gratification is the curse of humanity. And the sooner we realize this, that we are products, and because people know we want things quickly and with convenience, they sell you those things. You always sell what the consumer wants, always. If they want convenience, you give them convenience. Give them food that they can get at the click of a button. No matter how bad the quality of food is, people want it conveniently, and that's why fast food works. It's cheap, it's fast, and it's convenient. But now come down to human health. Okay, when you are playing around with the gift of life, that is where I have a problem. Okay, not for you, for myself and the people who care. If I can inspire you to understand that you are responsible for what happens in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years of your life and everything that you're doing today, every medication that you're putting in your body, okay, is having an effect, you may need it. But how long do you need it for? Because you've been told you need it for a lifetime, does that mean you really need it for a lifetime? Let's go through Hashimoto's thyroid today. Millions of people suffer from this. The sad part is millions of people don't know what they have. They think they have a normal underactive thyroid gland. They think they have hypothyroid or they have hypothyroid. And now when we send, when we send our patients in the US and Australia and London and Dubai, and we tell them, hey, listen, get an anti-TPO and an anti-ATG. They come back and say, look, the doctors say, why? So they said, these are, these are not required tests. I say, go back to your doctor and ask them, then why do they have it on the panel? If they're not important parameters and they're useless to the medical community, why do they exist? If they were useless, they wouldn't exist, but they exist. And they get the test done and they come back with high ATG and high TPO. Now, why do we need that? Why can't we just keep it simple and treat them with tyroxine or whatever the treatment is? Because you wanna to try to find out the root cause. When a patient comes to you with fatigue, with anxiety, with depression, with brain fog, with drying skin, with dulling skin, with frizzy hair, with dry hair, with sudden dandruff, which they never had before. Miscarriages, constant miscarriages, constantly being bloated, constant mood swings, crying in the day when everything's going well in your life. You know, all of this stuff, okay? Your treatment isn't the next depression medication always. Your treatment is not the next antidepressant. The answer could lie with your thyroid gland and it could be a Hashimoto's and that's why we want the ATG and that's why we want the anti-TPO because in integrative medicine, you look for the root cause, not the symptom. There are enough of treatments out there to treat you for the symptom. But if you really wanna get better and get off those medications, you need to know what you have. Like I said, millions of people don't even know what they have, so they can't correct the problem. And then the doctors say that, oh, it's still not important because there is no medication for it. Just because there's no medication for anti-ATG and anti-TPO doesn't mean you don't consider it. The very fact that you now have an autoimmune condition, you can take care of various root causes of the autoimmune condition, which in a couple of years could be an arthritis, a lupus, a multiple sclerosis, a vitiligo, an eczema, a psoriasis. So the idea is preventive healthcare means addressing the root cause so it can prevent future problems from the primary problem that you have. And today we're gonna to go, go into that in detail. And the beauty is today medical doctors around the world are now considering and actually treating Hashimoto's the right way. And we're gonna talk about that. 
So the number one thing you need to do, yes, it may cost you a little bit more money. If you actually calculate the amount of money you're gonna spend on a thyroid medication for a lifetime, and the cost of getting an anti-ATG and TPO test with the possibility of reversing your thyroid condition or putting it in remission, you're gonna save a lot more money. And yes, it takes a little bit of lifestyle change to make it go away, or at least if you can't get a few medication, come down to the lowest possible dosage. But there are too many people out there living with all of the symptoms I just told you. And yes, they are, they are. So when you have fatigue and anxiety, you go, your doctor gives you a pill. Okay, fine, I'm okay with the pill. I'm not coming between you and your doctor. But my point is, what if the root cause is not that? What if you're not depressed? but you're having depression symptoms and anxiety symptoms because of your Hashimoto condition, which we all know is an endocrine problem, which can create mood swings, which can create similar effects to depression, anxiety, and everything else. There are tons of people who say, Luke, I sleep well, I eat well, but I have this brain fog. I'm confused. My memory goes. I can't remember things. I constantly feel lethargic in my brain. And they're told to sleep more. They're given you know, more carbs in the diet, they're told to eat sugar, they're told to do all of that stuff. It could just be a thyroid gland. The point is, if you have a problem in your family, if you have a problem in, the business, in your business, do you put a Band-Aid over it or do you try to address the root cause of what the problem is in your family or in your business so that you can address the root cause and take care of the problem once and for all and prevent future problems in the future? So when it comes down to Hashimoto's, it is nothing but an autoimmune condition where your own thyroid gland is being attacked by your own immune system. Let's understand antibodies. We need antibodies, they're good things. We have an innate immune system and an adapted immune system. Innate, okay, let's say I breathe in a virus right now or a germ, I start coughing, my body's trying to push it out. Okay, my immune system wakes up, that's the innate immune system, produces more white blood cells to kill the infection, beautiful process. Okay, and then over time, my, if, I, if it continues, my adaptive immune system is the intelligent immune system that's slowly trying to identify what is the foreign invader, who is this new warrior in Luke's body, and it starts to develop antibodies so it can attack it. Principle of vaccinations, okay? Your adaptive immune system takes a little bit of time. Now, it produces antibodies in response to the immune function, perfect. But what happens when your immune system starts to get over erratic? What happens when it starts to get confused and it produces antibodies that don't attack the actual enemy, but it starts to attack your body parts, your glands, like your thyroid gland and Hashimoto's, your cartilage, your joints and arthritis, your skin and eczema and psoriasis, your skin and vitiligo, your myelin sheet and your nerves and multiple sclerosis and the list goes on and on. Systemic lupus where it attacks all, every part of you. So it's your immune system that's gone a little bit erratic the intelligence is a little bit lost and your own immune system, the own soldiers in your body that are designed to protect you are now attacking you, okay? So yes, there is no medicine for that, but just because there's a lack of medicine doesn't mean that that's the end of you. There's so much more that you can do today which science itself is documenting. So number one, it could be genetic and just because it's genetic doesn't mean you have to have it. Your genes are influenced by the way you live your life. Your genes are influenced by your external environment, your internal environment. That's why it's called epigenetics. Epi is environment, external in Greek. So the way I think can affect my genes. What I eat can affect my genes. How much I sleep, how little I sleep, how much I move, how sedentary I am, how stressed I am can turn on the bad genes and turn off the good genes. We know this, it's documented in science, it's documented in medical literature. So. What stops us from exploring the possibilities of why in the first place is your immune system behaving erratically and why is it attacking you? We can't sit there and blame it on genetics. The easiest thing is to blame it on genetics and do nothing about it. The easiest thing is that, blame and say, oh, I don't wanna put in the work. But the safest thing is to address the root cause. The second thing, what do we see common in Hashimoto's patients? Weak livers, fatty livers, sluggish livers, slow livers that are constantly processing toxins, overindulgence of alcohol, pollution, all of these things and the wrong foods, too much of fat, too much of deep fried food. Liver, T3, T4 conversion rates are all linked with the liver as well. Your thyroid and your liver are linked, which is why I tell you, when someone's treating your thyroid gland, you can't just look at the thyroid gland, you gotta look at the liver as well. 
When someone's treating your liver, you've got to look at the health of your thyroid gland as well. It's all interconnected with each other. So in the protocol of healing your Hashimoto's or putting it into remission, you have to look at your liver. You have to look at your liver enzymes, inflammatory markers in your liver. Do you have a grade one fatty liver, two cirrhotic liver, all of it. And you've got to work with your liver as well as your thyroid gland. Chronic stress. If I have to look at 95% of my Hashimoto's patients or autoimmune patients, chronic stress has been part of their life at some point, maybe five years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and that's when it started the whole process. You see, chronic stress causes your immune system to behave erratically. Your immune system can respond beautifully, short-term stress, knows what to do. But when the stress is chronic, cortisol levels are high, adrenaline levels are high, those are your hormones to manage your fight and flight response. Your immune system is on total guard all the time all the time. The signaling pathways can get affected with inflammation that is also caused because of stress, autoimmune condition. So yes, part of your healing of thyroid is your chronic stress. A lot of people say, Luke, what do we do? Everyone has stress. My question is, what are you doing about it? Okay, everyone has everything. Everyone has access to drugs. Everyone has access to illegal substances. What are you doing about it? Okay, that's the lamest excuse, but it should inspire us to move to action. That yes, I have chronic stress. I have to make decisions. I have to make choices. I have to make change. If I don't, yes, I will have this condition, which soon will become something more serious. So chronic stress is one of the major causes of almost every autoimmune condition. A lot of people say, but look, my five-year-old kid, my four, what stress do they have? And then we link it, we, we break it down, and we find that bedwetting is using, huge in these children. Bedwetting is usually a signal of children being scared. And you go into the family dynamics, and it is either a very strict mother or a very strict father or very strict parents or parents who fight, parents who threaten the space of their children with their own behavior, and the child has chronic stress. They go to sleep with chronic stress, they wake up with chronic stress. There is always a reason why. So chronic stress is part of your recovery protocol as well to bring down your anti-TPO levels and your ATG levels and heal the thyroid gland. Nutrition. What are the deficiencies when it comes to an underactive thyroid gland and an attacked thyroid gland like Hashimoto's? You have zinc deficiencies, you have selenium deficiencies, you have the lack of medium chain fatty acids in your body, which are your saturated fats, which everyone's trying to cut out because they want to lose weight but they don't understand that saturated fats are required for hormonal health, good cholesterol, everything, your hair, your skin, your heart, your brain, your endocrine system. You have a lack of vitamin A and you have a lack of what I keep harping about, vitamin D3. So when you find out you have a Hashimoto's, guess what? It's telling you a lot more about your thyroid condition. It's telling you the deficiencies that you have. And all the deficiencies I mentioned with creates and are linked with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, a low immune system, hair fall, bad skin, weight gain, all of these issues. So you see, when you try to find out the root cause, you can solve many possible problems at one time. And that is why you do the anti-TPO and the anti-ATG. Just because there's no medicine doesn't mean that the doctor's verdict is final. And I'll say this over and over again. Let the doctors do what they need to do with the medication. Don't let them do, they're experts at that. But if anyone tells you that you gotta live with it for a lifetime, that's when you change your doctor. Because if they don't have faith that you can get better and they wanna keep you on the pill all the time, of course, if your levels don't come down, the doctor must keep you on the medication. But if you make lifestyle changes and you're bringing it down, there's no reason why you have to be on the medication for a lifetime. And as I speak, there are doctors around the world who are getting their patients off because their patients are changing their lifestyle. The gland is getting less attacked and hence it can heal. It goes into remission and you no longer are a patient of Hashimoto's. That is the simple science. Do it, don't do it. There's a whole load of people who want to hide behind science. Their lives never improve. Use science when there's something that is invasive, something that can harm you. But when you're trying to defend common sense and wisdom with science, you become the loser. It's as simple as that. What's the next biggest cause of Hashimoto's? A leaky gut syndrome. If you have bloating, constipation, H. pylori, IBS, all of these issues, you possibly have a leaky gut syndrome. And because you have a leaky gut syndrome, you have foreign invaders that enter your bloodstream through your small intestine, permeability, and your immune system wakes up to attack it. It's called molecular mimicry. It can attack your thyroid gland in Hashimoto's, your joints and arthritis, and you know, I, I already said that. So your gut, has to be addressed when you are trying to reverse your thyroid. Your gut protocol has to be in. 
whether it's your pre's, your probiotics, bringing down inflammation again. And here's the beauty of chronic stress. What stress affect? Your gut. Your gut regulates your hormones. What is thyroxine? A hormone. What is insulin? A hormone. What is prolactin? A hormone. And likewise, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, everything to do with your belly fat, your weight gain, your skin, your hair, and everything. So if you keep the gut out of your equation and healing, you will never get better. Never. And your medication is only going to go up and up, or you're going to be on medication for a lifetime. Every medication has a side effect, period. This is not to scare you, this is to inspire you to action. Because if other people can do it, there is no reason why you cannot do it. Okay, and then we come to environmental toxins. You know, there's a lot of environmental toxins that actually cause the immune system to behave erratically. And it's different for everyone. Some people can handle it, some people cannot. So we need to know that if I'm living in a polluted area and it affects my thyroid, I have a Hashimoto's, you know, we gotta live accordingly. You know, environmental toxins that come in from your cosmetics, from your creams, from plastic drinking water, all of these things, the xenoestrogens, these can disrupt the endocrine system. So you gotta also try to move to more healthier and sustainable and ethical ways of using cosmetics, foods, and vice versa. When it comes to a leaky gut syndrome, of course you gotta get of dairy and you gotta get of gluten even if you're not intolerant because it's causing inflammation in the gut. So you see how many things there are that you can do. And lastly, your sleep. There is no way you can heal a thyroid gland if you are sleep deprived. Let me just put it that way. Now I understand some of you may be CEOs, very busy people, wanna be very busy people, all of that stuff. But if that's the truth that sleep is required, you gotta fix it if you really wanna fix your condition. So you see when you break it down, okay, this is the simplicity of the thyroid gland and the Hashimoto's. Whoever you are, wherever you may be in the world, get your anti-ATG and your anti-TPO test done. That is the best indicator. And when your doctors ask you why you want to do it, say, I want to do it because I want to know what's happening at a root cause level. And they say, we don't have medicine. I don't need medicine. You don't need medicine to reverse this. You need medicine to maintain your TSH levels and you should be on medication if your TSH levels are all over the place. But once the gland gets better and it can automatically produce TSH, your doctor has to reduce your medication. And that's what doctors do. They bring you down from 100 to a 75 alternate days, then to a 50, then to a 25, then to a 10 maybe, and then slowly wean you off. That's happening while we speak. And the last most important point is your mindset. If you don't believe your body has the ability to heal, you can become a product and a consumer to the pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, and the medical world out there for however long you want. What I talked to you about today, there is no magic pill. I have nothing to sell you. I don't have a magic food to sell you. I don't have a magic diet to sell you. I don't have a magic vaccination to sell you. The magic is in you. When you give the body what it needs, the intelligence that your body has, there is no person on this planet who yet understands the intelligence. So you create an environment for your body to use what you feed it. You create the environment with your sleep, your exercise, good relationships, stress, all of that stuff. And guess what? All the people healing out there, all the people putting cancers in remission, putting their thyroids into remission, reversing type two diabetes, they're normal people like you and me. They're doing something differently. They've changed their lifestyle. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember you care is all about you. And let me tell you that once you start addressing this, the TPO sometimes could be 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Don't be worried about the number. I've seen 7,000, I've seen 9,000. And it can come down very, 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 very slowly. Don't be disheartened with that. Never be disheartened with that. The ATG sometimes will be absolutely fine, but the TPO is fine. Don't be disheartened. Put in the protocol and run it. Sometimes it takes two to three years for the TPO to come right down. But your thyroid gland's getting better because your medication can reduce in that time. So be very open with your mindset when it comes to the human body. There's very little that you need to do with the human body. It's like the Pareto Principle. I hated the Pareto Principle when I was in the corporate world because I never really understood it with numbers, but I understood it with lifestyle. You just gotta give your body 20% of the things, a little bit of sleep, a, little, a good amount of sleep, right nutrition, timings of nutrition, eat slow, the right amount of movement, you know, learning to relax, learning to let go, accept, forgive, and guess what, that's all you need to do. The balance 80%, the intelligence of your body takes over brilliantly, like no doctor, like no nutritionist, like no scientist. It's a beautiful procedure that happens. Some people call it a miracle. I just call it the gift of life, which has the ability to heal. And of course, there are some cases that no matter what you do, it will not work. But that percentage is very small. Don't let that be the demotivator for you. 
Don't let someone else's failure be the reason why you don't try. Have a great day, everyone.